So it's my uh, great pleasure to uh, start the first session of this uh, meeting. And so we're going to talk about Nash and the Redux uh, state. And I first going to welcome um, Dr. Uh, Jennifer Rieusset, and it's really a great pleasure to welcome Jennifer. And today she's going to talk about very recent data published in a very nice uh, paper in GHEP, where she's going to present uh, this new finding. So welcome, Jennifer, and thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. Thank you, Catherine. Do you see my presentation in full screen? Yes. 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 Good. So good afternoon to everyone. It's a great pleasure to participate to this meeting. And I would like to thank the organizer for the invitations. So today I would like to present you a recent result of our last study on a new role of ER mitochondria calcium cupping in hepatic insulin resistance and steatosis during metabolic fatty liver disease. So as you know, the nomenclature of NAFLD has recently updated to MEFLD for metabolic associated fatty liver disease. So MEFLD is present when hepatic steatosis is associated with either obesity, type 2 diabetes, or metabolic dysfunctions in the absence of alcohol consumption. So fatty liver associated with metabolic disease is common. It affects a quarter of the population and uh, it has no approved drug therapy. Therefore, it's crucial to identify early molecular mechanisms leading to hepatic steatosis and metabolic dysfunction, such as, for example, hepatic insulin resistance, in order to identify new preventive or therapeutic strategy to improve whole body uh, glucose and lipid homeostasis. And for different reasons, we investigated the potential involvement of ER mitochondria miscommunication as an early mechanism leading to hepatic metabolic alterations. So as you know, ER and mitochondria are key metabolic organelles. They are not isolated into the cell. They interact at contact sites known as mitochondria-associated ER membranes or MAMs in order to exchange phospholipid or calcium and regulating cellular signaling and homeostasis. So briefly, it's assumed that around 20% of mitochondria are in contact with ER, but this value can vary as uh, MAMs are highly dynamic structure. The interaction does not involve membrane fusion, but is mediated through protein data. So there is now a lot of protein identified at MAM interface, several enzyme of phospholipid metabolism, several protein tether, and the transfer of calcium from ER to mitochondria is mediated through Never. the calcium channeling yeah. complex composed of IP3R, GRP75, and VDAC. And this transfer of calcium from ER to mitochondria is crucial for the control of mitochondria bioenergetic as a mitochondria calcium level activate several deshydrogenases of Krebs cycle, leading to fine control of oxidative metabolism. However, if the increase in mitochondria calcium level is too high, uh, calcium can open the uh, permeability transition for and lead to apoptosis. So it's crucial to maintain ear mitochondria communication in a narrow range. So several techniques have been uh, uh, developed to study ER mitochondria uh, structure and function. At structural level, uh, contacts are analyzed classically by electronic microscopy or immunolabeling. However, these techniques are heavy and uh, time consuming. So we developed a new one, easier, faster, and more sensitive leading to the visualization and the quantification of ER mitochondria interaction by in-situ proximity ligation assay, targeting the proximity between HIP3R and VDAC. So each red dots that uh, appear in the liver of, uh, of mice correspond to an interaction between both organelles. And for the function of, of MAM, we classically measure organelle calcium exchange using fluorescent probe. 
So now it's admitted that mom play crucial uh, cellular role in, to hold the cells, as the mom's control calcium and lipid homeostasis, control mitochondria dynamic and functions, ER homeostasis, apoptosis, as well as inflammatory and innate immunity signaling. So it's not surprising that metabolic role of mom has been proposed, as all these cellular processes are key actors of the control of metabolic homeostasis. And since uh, several uh, years, we, uh, my group study uh, the role of mums in metabolic health and disease. And we per perform important discovery into this field. We demonstrate that uh, ER mitochondria interactions control hepatic and muscular insulin action, as well as pancreatic insulin secretion, leading to a fine <coughs> control of glucose homeostasis. And ER mitochondria miscommunication was involved in type 2 diabetes development. Furthermore, we demonstrate that ER mitochondria interactions are uh, regulated in the liver by the nutritional transition from fasted to fed state, allowing the adaptation of hepatic, hepatic metabolic flexibility. Recently, we demonstrate the key role of MAF in mitochondrial bioenergetic and cardiac function, playing a key role in a diabetic cardiomyopathy. Therefore, uh, ER mitochondria contact sites have several metabolic roles in different tissue, and ER mitochondria miscommunication uh, are involved in metabolic uh, disease. So just to illustrate how one of our previous results using genetic and nutritional model <coughs> of obesity, <coughs> We demonstrate that fatty <clears throat> steatosis and alteration of hepatic insulin sensitivity illustrated here by the reduction of insulin signaling is systematically associated with a reduction of ER mitochondria interaction uh, measured by in-situ PLA. However, these previous results are incomplete as we measure here only structural interaction and not functional interactions. And uh, these results are also associative, and it's what it is unknown whether ER mitochondria miscommunication could play a causal role in the development of hepatic insulin resistance and steatosis. Therefore, we decide to investigate this key question, and we combine different mice models in order to investigate the causal role of uh, uh, ER mitochondria calcium coupling in methyl D. So, we analyze ER mitochondria interaction and calcium exchange in diet induced obese mice in a time dependent and reversal uh, manner by performing a kinetic uh, study and a reversal diet protocol. In the second step, we uh, investigate the causality of MAM disruptions uh, by overexpressing uh, specifically in the liver an organelle uh, spacer or linker. Uh, using a de novo world strategy. And lastly, we investigate the relevance of, of our results in humans. So let's start with the nutritional uh, study where male mice are fed with either a standard or an high fat, high sucrose diet for one, four, eight, 12, and 16 weeks. We found that uh, high fat, high sucrose diet mice uh, uh, are. Uh, were obese and glucose intolerant as soon as after one week of overnutrition with a significant increase of body weight and a significant increase of area under curve during glucose tolerance test. At opposite, hepatic steatosis appear later after 12 weeks of diet with a significant increase of the liver weight and a significant increase of hepatic triglyceride level. Similarly, in systemic insulin resistance appear after 12 weeks of high fat, high sucrose diet. And we uh, confirm that at the end of the nutritional protocol, there is hepatic insulin resistance with a significant reduction of insulin signaling and action on glucose production in primary hepatocyte of obese mice. 
So then we analyze ER mitochondria interruption by in situ proximity ligation assay and electronic microscopy. Using in situ PLA, we uh, found uh, an early reduction of the proximity between VDIC and IP3R uh, in the liver of mice after one week of high fat, high sucrose diet. And this defect is maintained through all the, the diet feeding period. Then we decide to confirm this result by electronic microscopy, and we analyze the percentage of, of mitochondrial membrane in contact with ear, as well as the occurrence of contact uh, between different gap widths. And we confirm the, uh, the early reduction of ear mitochondria contact site for the closest contact, and a more general uh, reduction of contact for all the contact after 16 weeks of high fat, high sucrose diet. Therefore, we observe an early reduction of ER mitochondria interaction, which, pre which precedes uh, hepatic steatosis and insulin resistance. Then we analyze the function of MAM and we focus on a, a short high fat diet feeding after one and four weeks of, uh, of overnutrition. And for that, we measure mitochondrial calcium level in primary hepatocyte using a freight based mitochondrial specific calcium probe, which allow us to measure mitochondrial calcium level in basal situation and after an ATP stimulated ear calcium release. Therefore, the delta peak here illustrates the transfer of calcium from ear to mitochondria. So we found that basal mitochondrial calcium level are not modulated uh, in basal situation after one and four weeks of uh, overnutrition. However, we observe a significant reduction of ATP stimulated mitochondrial calcium accumulations after a uh, boss time of overnutrition, illustrating a reduction of uh, ER mitochondrial calcium exchange as an early uh, event preceding hepatic insulin resistance and steatosis. Then we moved on a reversal diet protocol and, we, uh, and the high fat, high sucrose fed mice were uh, switched on a, on a standard diet for four or eight uh, additional week. And we compared them with, uh, uh, with mice fed for 20 uh, and 24 weeks of standard high fat, high sucrose diets. So we found that uh, four week of reversal diet is sufficient to improve obesity to improve glucose intolerance and to reduce uh, hepatic steatosis. However, uh, we did not observe an improvement of systemic of hep or hepatic insulin sensitivity after this short reversal diet. Then we perform a longer reversal diet protocol. We recapitulate all the previously observed phenotypes and uh, we further showed that the reversal diet for eight weeks further improved insulin sensitivity and hepatic insulin sensitivity as illustrated here by the reductions, by the improvement of uh, insulin tolerance and the improvement of insulin signaling and action on glucose production in primary hepatocyte of reversal diet mice. Then we analyze the ER mitochondria interaction after, after this two time of reversal diet. And uh, firstly, we confirm the reduction of uh, organelle interaction after 20 or 24 weeks of uh, high fat, high sucrose diet feeding. We did not observe an improvement of ER mitochondria miscommunication after the short reversal diet. However, eight week reversal diet uh, induced a significant improvement of ER mitochondria interactions concomitantly with the improvement of hepatic insulin sensitivity. Therefore, ER mitochondria uh, miscommunication is an early uh, event during uh, diet induced obesity, which can be improved by uh, switching mice on a reversal diet concomitantly with hepatic insulin sensitivity. 
So next, we investigate the causal role of, uh, of MAM in the development of uh, these uh, hepatic metabolic alterations. And for that, we decided to modulate uh, ER mitochondria interaction through the overexpression of either a spacer or a linker using adenoviral strategy. So we, uh, we disrupt ER mitochondria interaction by overexpressing the organelle spacer FATE1. And we reinforce organelle interaction by, by overexpressing a linker, which consists of a red fluorescent protein with uh, ER and mitochondria incurring sites. So in both cases, uh, we, uh, we validate that the overexpression of construct is uh, liver specific and that around half of hepatocytes are in, really infected. And then we analyze whether FATE1 mediated MAM disruption induce hepatic insulin resistance and steatosis after 15 days after infection, and whether the re reinforcement of MAM improve uh, high fat, high sucrose diet induced metabolic alteration after four weeks of, of overnutrition. So firstly, we validate our tools and we demonstrate that uh, uh, FATE1 overexpression indeed reduce ER mitochondria interaction measured by in situ proximity ligation assay and reduce the transfer of calcium from ER to mitochondria. At opposite, we validate that uh, the reinforcement of MAM using the linker uh, indeed induce an increase of ER mitochondria interaction in both standard and high fat, high sucrose uh, diet mice and induce an increase of ER calcium exchange. So next we analyze the repercussion on the metabolic homeostasis. Concerning glucose homeostasis, we demonstrate that fate one mediated MAM disruption induce glucose intolerance and alter hepatic insulin signaling and actions uh, in primary hepatocyte. Uh, whereas the reinforcement of MAM using the linker uh, prevent high fat, high sucrose diet induce glucose intolerance. We were not able to validate the repercussion on hepatic insulin sensitivity as four weeks of high fat, high sucrose diet is not sufficient to induce hepatic insulin resistance. Then we analyze the repercussion on lipid metabolism. And for that, we measure mitochondrial oxygen consumption under palmitate, uh, under palmitate as substrate. And we found a significant reduction of um, lipid driven mitochondrial oxygen consumption in, base, in both basal and maximal state. And this is associated with an increase of uh, hepatic steatosis, meaning that disrupting uh, ER mitochondria interaction is sufficient to reduce uh, lipid oxidation into mitochondria and to induce hepatic steatosis. At opposite, the reinforcement of MAM with the linker tend to increase uh, both basal and maximal. Uh, mitochondrial respiration under palmitate as substrate. And this is associated with a reduction of the lipid dropper size in primary hepatocyte, and this difference is significant uh, in high fat, high sucrose fed mice. So the, lastly, we, we try to investigate the, the relevance of our observation in human, and for that we collaborate with the team of uh, Philippe Guel at Nice in France. And we decided to analyze ER mitochondria interactions in the liver of obese patient with or without type 2 diabetes. We confirmed that a type 2 diabetic patient has increased a significant increase in fasting glycemia in OMA index of insulin resistance and HbA1c levels. However, the grade of hepatic steatosis is similar in both group of patients. And we demonstrate uh, and we analyze ER mitochondria interaction by in situ PLA, and we found a significant reduction of organelle interaction in the liver of obese patients with type 2 diabetes. And importantly, the organelle interaction is negatively regulated with fasting glycemia, with, uh, with the HbA1c level, and with, with the OMA index of insulin resistance. 
validating the close relationships between organic communications and hepatic insulin sensitivity. So to conclude, our data clearly demonstrate that ER mitochondria the disruption of ER mitochondria calcium coupling is an early and reversible uh, event uh, leading to hepatic insulin resistance and steatosis. Uh, FATE 1 mediated disruptions of MAM is sufficient to induce hepatic insulin resistance and steatosis. And the prevention of diet induced organelle miscommunication by the overexpression of the linker is able to improve hepatic metabolic uh, alteration. Therefore, targeting of MAM may, uh, may uh, sorry, uh, targeting of MAM may, imp may, uh, may uh, improve uh, hepatic insulin sensitivity and steatosis. And we have now to identify nutritional or pharmacological regulator of ER mitochondria interaction in order to, to, uh, to fight against uh, MAFLD in the future. So I would like to finish by uh, thanking my, uh, my team, particularly former PhD student who performed the study, our collaborator and our sponsor and you for your, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jennifer. That was really a wonderful talk. So we have a few questions from the Q and, and, and R. So um, the first question comes from John Jones. Uh, so he's saying that uh, your kinetics and reversal uh, nutritional approach in the first part of your talk is uh, really interesting and he's, he's puzzled by the fact that steatosis appears quite uh, quickly, I mean not quickly but sharply at 12 weeks. Do you know why? Is it so slow in a way and do you have some idea of why it's happening in this kinetics? Yeah. Firstly, I, I think that uh, it's maybe related to the to the, to the measurement of uh, our um, of uh, hepatic steatosis. Uh, in this study, we did not perform a way those staining of the liver, mm -hmm. but we measure triglyceride total level in total lysates. We did not okay. extract a lipid level before the, this measurement, and maybe this this approach is less sensitive sensitive. You didn't you didn't perform liver section and or no, not in the, okay. into the kinetic. Okay. In the same lines, I had a, also a question and a comment is that when you do your kinetics, uh, you see first at 12 weeks that you have global insulin resistance and then hepatic insulin resistance at 16 weeks. And this is really interesting because there's always been questioning about what comes first. Yeah. But then when you do the reversal, it's hepatic insulin resistance that disappears first and yes. global insulin resistance persists. So how do you yes, interpret that? I agree that? with you, it's puzzling. Uh, in fact, we, uh, we, analyze, uh, uh, we analyze hepatic insulin signaling and action on glucose production only after 16 weeks. We don't know whether oh. it occurs after 12 weeks 12 of weeks. nutrition. So maybe it can occur in, into the same time. But okay. it's true that in the reversal diet protocol, we improved hepatic steatosis before, before. The, before the improvement of uh, systemic or hepatic insulin sensitivity. Yes, right. This, this is really nice. Yeah, I like it. Um, so there's a question by Jean-Francois Dufour. Uh, he's asking whether the mice during your kinetics were uh, either fed or fasted. I don't know if you mentioned, mentioned it. It uh, in general, uh, when- At the time of harvest, sorry, yeah. Is, mice are in fasted state. Fasted states, okay. There's an, it's not really a question, it's a, it's a comment and I know that Jennifer, you had, you had this comment many times, is the fact that you're working on a very competitive field where there's other groups working on it. And um, Kaspar has um, Pet Vixius is asking, how do you reconciliate your data with data from the other group from Boston, I guess, published in Nature Medicine to 2014, whether you have any clues why you get so many, you get so many different um, findings on, on the MAM pathway. Yes, <laughs> of course, there is, there is discrepancy into the literature and some author found 
at opposite of us, a reinforcement of here mitochondria interaction in the liver with obesity. I think that different factors can explain this discrepancy. Uh, probably that uh, the, the environment uh, of mice could participate. The technique to analyze the air mitochondria can also participate. And uh, one important thing uh, is that uh, normally, um, when, when uh, uh, scientists would uh, would like to validate the, the, the causal involvement of ER mitochondria contact site in the biologi biological process, they modulate an endogenous MAM protein. However, there is no uh, MAM protein which is specific of MAM because they have other function outside of MAM. They are at ER side, they are at mitochondria side, and, and they could participate to other function. Therefore, when we modulate one endogenous protein of MAM, we can have impact on other cellular mm -hmm. process outside of MAM. And it's why in our study, we decided to modulate mm -hmm. uh, ER mitochondria uh, interaction using not endogenously expressed protein. And FATE1 is not expressed in the liver, it is expressed only in the testes, and we and therefore, we impact ER mitochondria interaction without modifi modifying endogenous protein of man. So I think that our approach is more specific. More specific. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. We have a question from Bart from the panel. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Very nice hi. talk. Um, I was just wondering how and through which mechanism, molecular mechanism, you connect the mam mitochondrial interaction with the insulin resistance. Um, is this related to changes in signaling molecules like ceramides, DAGs? Uh, what, what, what is the, the idea of how this is connected? Because you didn't address that. So you, yes, you of course. For the moment, we don't know what is uh, induced via mitochondria interaction in the early step of uh, over an IFAT, uh, I took uh, uh, feeding. And we don't know how ER mitochondria miscommunication impact insulin sensitivity of steatosis. So I think that lipids can participate in both cases because uh, ER mitochondria miscommunication is an early process where uh, we have a, a high uh, free fatty acid overload. And when we uh, perform uh, the reversal diet protocol, we are able to improve ER mitochondria interaction before um, improve hepatic steatosis before the improvement uh, of ER mitochondria interaction, meaning that this process is MAM independent. And after the modulation in hepatic lipid level could therefore impact uh, ER mitochondria interaction and hepatic insulin sensitivity. So now we have to perform lipidomic analysis to really identify yeah. And for cellular lipid, we can modulate ER mitochondria interaction. And for the impact of MAMS on hepatic insulin sensitivity, I, I think that uh, it can be mediated through cellular signaling because several protein of insulin signaling at MAM, at MAM interface, but it could also, it could also uh, be explained by repercussion on lipid accumulation or uh, on ceramide or DSC glycerol levels. So we have to, to, to investigate these important questions. Yes, I agree. 